Hola, buenos dias guys, John here in Paradise Paraíso, the surf spot, the huge waves back there. It looks tiny from over here because the camera's so zoomed out and it's so far, but when you see that shit, it's like 15, 20 feet back there. Um, so I'm gonna call this guy M. You know, like I was saying, he went on the uh, site and sent a donation. And then uh, it says, what made you want to give a donation? He said, all your great tips, good attitude and help. And then uh, one of the questions I asked, is there anything you would like me to cover in a video or a question you have? He said, how to get a good real girlfriend in Mexico. So I can't answer this all in one video, like I was saying, because I've already done a bunch of videos before that kind of like, lead up to this to kind of like because it's not just one thing that you can do to find one you got to have all the pieces of the puzzle in your life all going good and then put it all together and then you'll find a good girlfriend whether it's in mexico or anywhere you'll be able to find one you know like uh at least it may not be a good one in america but at least it increases your chances of meeting more that you can possibly find a good one see chef munchies Man, it looks good. She even made potatoes and stuff. Oh, I'm gonna show you guys that. Look at this. <laughs> so good. Hey, tú olvidaste de poner la carne asada vegan. Oh, sí, no me está bien. So, está bien, pero va a cambiar el sabor. So, uh, like I was saying, it takes all of those things. You gotta have your your fitness, your finances, your freedom, your uh, funness. And that's what brings the people attracted to you. Like I said, whether it's a guy or girl, people will gravitate towards you and want to be a part of your life and, uh, you know, help you. Like the girls will want to enjoy spending time. They'll want to spend time with you. They'll enjoy spending time with you and stuff. And so it'll be, uh, that's kind of like, I did a bunch of other videos. Um, I don't know how much you've watched M or you other guys. Baby, aquí para podemos ser juntos. So come eat next to me so we can be together. This is a cool table. It's fucking some artisan fucking, it's a tree stump. Look how big this fucking tree stump is. And they carved it. There's like a, a jaguar. It's a jaguar. Look at the jaguar uh, things right here. Pretty cool. Some art, like real Mexican local woodwork. Okay. And so, uh, can't really answer that question because in order to get a good girlfriend, how good are you? What do you have to offer to make these girls wanna, uh, baby, not pone recuerda. How good are you to make a girl wanna be with you? What do you have to offer that makes a good girl wanna be with you besides giving money? You're gonna just only have money to give. That's all they're gonna expect like be with you for, you won't get the real love, affection, attention. It's only because they're using you. And so like I keep telling you. Hola, what's up guys? Had to interrupt the video to bring you guys an important announcement. A lot of you guys watching, I've been receiving tons of messages from guys that are virgins, that haven't been laid yet, that want to get laid, and maybe guys that have already been laid, but they're not getting access to girls where they're at, so they want to get laid still. You know, these guys are getting taken advantage of, reaching out to escort strippers or whatever they're reaching out to, wasting all that money. If you really need help that bad and you want to do it that bad, reach out, I'll help you guys. We'll just discuss whatever it is that you're facing it can also be other stuff maybe you're heartbroken and need advice or need something to help you get over that heartbreak maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend where you feel like she's cheating on you or things just aren't the same i can help you analyze the situation and get over it i've gone through a lot of relationships already with girls from all over the place all over the world different places you know so i've seen all the things that they do been in long-term relationships so i know what a marriage feels like i know what divorce feels like i haven't been divorced but in a long-term relationship to where I felt like divorced pretty much and so I've seen a lot of people go through it and I can help you guys that are going through these type of things too if you need help maybe like going to another place I can put you in touch with people in different places in part of my network or find people that are viewers as well that can help that's why I'm doing this to get the word across of the things that I can help you with not just that if you own a business and you're accepting credit cards and you're still paying the fees you don't got to pay the fees no more you're pretty much just throwing your money in the trash you can better off just using it on yourself splurging taking a vacation enjoying like this in a pool in a tropical location somewhere where there's nothing but palm trees around and tropical birds 
that kind of stuff where the weather is perfect, you can be doing that instead. Uh, or if you uh, know, have some friends or family that own businesses that are still wasting their money paying the fees, you know, I'll be able to help. So I can help with a number of things, and I'll be glad to you know, put you guys in the right direction. Same thing if you guys got want to go to Costa Rica. I got friends out there. Cancun, I got friends down there. Philippines, I got a lot of friends out there. So if you guys need help on any of that stuff, reach out. I'll be glad to put you in contact so that way you can have a better experience all around. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios. To, uh, no, it's that palito. No, it's that palito. 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 It's kind of crooked. Let me fix this. There. So before you ask, uh, where's these girls? Get, how are you going to get a good girl? What does a good girl want? that you have to want her to be around you, you know? If you ain't got nothing going on in your life and you're fat, overweight, you're nerdy, you're awkward. I did a couple videos about these guys that went overseas to try and find a wife and it's a perfect example of how majority of guys are. <laughs> and so, uh, like I was saying is that I uh, watched the last couple videos, it might be a little bit before this, but I did a video, where, a couple videos talking about the guys going overseas and they're overweight, they're awkward, and they got nothing to offer and they think that wanting to come to America, why do these hot supermodel Megan Fox looking girls, why would, why would they want to be with an awkward guy like that? So. And that's like a model looking girl. What more for these good, innocent girls? You know, what's gonna make them wanna be with you or hang around with you if I'm, without you just them using you for money? So that's the first part of it. But what I'm gonna talk about in this video is like, so I, I saved this one video uh, about this, this girl who, she's pretty popular. Um, I did a video, uh, I had her, I added a clip of one of her videos. She's called Your Wingman. And uh, she gives like tips for guys to meet girls and dating advice and things like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, use this video that she did about, hold on, let me adjust this a little bit closer. About how she talks about 33 places to meet women in the real, real world right now. And so this will help. Once you got your shit together, then you use these strategies where you can go and meet them. And so I know M's question said in Mexico, but it doesn't really matter where. Like I said, if you're a nerd in America, going overseas ain't gonna change who you are. You're still gonna be a nerd. And the same female nature applies anywhere around the world. They still wanna be with a fucking high value guy or a guy that adds value to their life. Uh, that they would be happy and proud to be with. And so, like I said, if your shit ain't together, don't expect to get a, a high value girl or even just a sweet local girl because, and on top of that, a lot of you guys can't even communicate their language. So you're expecting to get this hot girl from another country and not speak their language and think that you're gonna skate by using fucking Google Translate to try and build a relationship. Come on now, the girls only put up with it in the clubs or wherever you're meeting them because they're there and you're paying them and you're talking to them and translate, how awkward is that? Imagine a fucking whole relationship going, oh here, da 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 da, da 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 da, da 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 That's your conversation, you know? Like even that few seconds that you're just passing the phone back and you're talking, they get bored and they lose interest and they're no matter how good whatever you're talking about kind of loses its fucking, it loses what whatever it is that you're trying to get to, to the message you're trying to get to them. Baby, mira el encendedor. Tú estás haciendo como esto. Mm -hmm. Te dije como esto. Mira, tú, tú, tú sabes. ¿Entiendes? Está lleno. So now that I got past that, like, I want you guys to see because a lot of you guys are delusional and thinking that, oh yeah, I'm, I just watched a bunch of Passport Bro videos. I seen these big fat guys, a bunch of these black guys that are all going all over, you know, awkward dudes awkward Asian dudes, everyone, whoever's making these fucking videos, showing you guys these things, going to Colombia and Philippines and Thailand, you know, old men doing it. And it's like, guys, come on, with a girl, with a hot girl like that, wanna be with a dude like that? Come on now, looking at it from the reality, a lot of you guys won't step back and look at yourselves and give yourselves an honest fucking uh, look as to where do you stand compared to because the girls have options and you think you're, they're, they're, you're their only option and you're not even comparing yourself to the other guys out there that, that uh, they're competing, you're competing against, you know? And so that's what I'm saying. You gotta 
try and improve the best you possibly can and give yourself the best possible chance to get yourself a good girl. And then after you're like shits all together, then we can use some of this advice on some places to find these types of girls. So I'm gonna start playing her video and then uh, we'll go, I'll pause it and make some like talking points and add some other places that I think are good places to go meet girls in the real world. Like fuck the online shit guys, don't even go online. Online is nothing but catfishing, them like making old pictures, fake profiles and shit. So online dating I'm completely against. So don't do it. Move this. It's got our entire weed stuff right here. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit better. All right. So. <sighs> okay, fellas, look around. You're surrounded by forest and women. <laughs> you can literally meet women anywhere if you've got the guts to get out of your comfort zone. If you're too scared to talk to women because of fear of rejection or humiliation, then come out to a public spot and do a video. No, <laughs> what you need to do is work on your self-esteem. But if you're afraid to talk to women because of me too, well, you need to read up on what constitutes sexual harassment or harassment by seabirds. <laughs> in most places, it's not illegal to smile at a woman or say hello, and that can be as little as it takes. In most countries, you don't gotta worry about that. So if you travel abroad, it's so much easier. The girls are more open, they're more friendly. They're not gonna be a bitch. Even if they're gonna shut you down, they're gonna be very fucking, uh, they're gonna be very respectful when they do it. And then uh, when she was saying being shy, like I was saying, uh, if you guys work on yourself and you have all your other shit together, you're gonna naturally have confidence and you won't have that shyness. The reason you're shy is because what do you, you, you have no confidence if they shut you down, like you don't give a fuck and you have no options to where you don't care whether she says yes or no or talks to you. You wouldn't care because you have all these other options and then that's what comes uh, with the confidence and like they're gonna, you're just gonna be like pestering them at that point and they don't wanna be around you. So uh, get your shit together again. Like uh, uh, I'm gonna keep stressing that <laughs> so you guys can fucking uh, get it through your head and finally learn if you haven't already. <sighs> it's fucking hot here. To start a conversation, in other words, if you want to meet women, you're going to have to initiate communication because over 86% of women won't initiate. And the other 14% are either starting conversations with the top 10% of men or are dominant and masculine or are radicalized feminists, which is fine if you want. She just said exactly what I've been trying to tell you guys. The girls ain't going to talk to you unless you're one of the top 10% or have something to offer that will help their life, you know? If you want a dominant woman or a feminist, hang out at a college or university campus, particularly one with more than one women's study on the docket. You might even want to join one of those classes. But hint, even most of these straight, single, female feminists prefer confident, masculine, conservative men. I'm not the creator, just the decoder. Otherwise, stick with me. You'll discover numerous places in the real world that are not a nightclub where the average Joe can meet single women. If you're new to my channel, I help men decode modern women so you can find, attract, and keep your keeper, or at least have better relationships with women. Welcome to Just the Tip. So while some traditional venues like bars and clubs are still popular for hookups, couples who stay together often initially connect in other settings. So here are 30... Bars and clubs are not the place to meet girls, guys. They're only, they're only good places to meet girls for temporary fun. You ain't gonna meet a good quality girlfriend unless she's there for a birthday and never goes out. Those are the exceptions. So cross that off your list. So here are 33 places to meet single women in the real world. And then an important note about approaching women you don't know and a note for introverts and online dating apps. One, social events, parties, gatherings, networking events. Find an extrovert <laughs> and ask them to invite you. Two, coffee shops. ID. So like weddings, she didn't say that, but weddings are a great place because all the bridesmaids are there and a lot of them are pretty. And a lot of them, you'll see when they do the contest thing, all the single girls come in, make a note of who all the single girls are, and then you can know who you can like talk to and strike up a casual conversation. And it's not gonna be as awkward because you guys are both there for a common acquaintance. And then you have something to talk about, how you know them, whatever, how long you known them, what are they doing there, who are they, who are they with, what are, uh, where are they from, you know, all those kinds of things. You can start uh, striking up conversations. So weddings are great. Uh, let me see what other places, uh, social events that she did. Like I like to surf, so doing something like that, surfing, you might meet people in the water, 
and the places that are in those the cities that the towns where the surf places are usually have like cool people that are more laid back so like i'm not just saying surfing but i'm using it as an example so whatever you're into that's where you go to these types of places and you're more able to have more things to communicate and people are more open and it's not so awkward it's not a cold approach it's a cold approach but it's not as cold because there's a common thing that you guys are like kind of like into and talking about and because the reason you're there. Ideal for casual conversations. If you work from home, try working from a coffee shop. Coffee shops are cool too. Like if you're a, a remote worker or like me where you can digital nomad because then you meet other guys or other girls that are there that are kind of doing this and you're genuinely interested to hear like, hey man, what are you doing? You know, it's the same thing. Whether it's a guy or a girl, you could ask the same question. Hey, what are you doing? What kind of work you do? Are you like in school or you work off online? You make money online? Like these are kind of questions that you're genuinely curious about. So places like that are great spots to meet. And just go there with a purpose. Don't just go there to sit there and try to meet girls. That's not the purpose to go for. Go there and get work done. I've met tons of people at coffee shops and I'm an introvert, but no longer shy. Three bookstores, particularly if there are book clubs or reading events. I met a guy in a bookstore and it was an interesting conversation. Four, parks, <laughs> a great place. I already told you guys there, that's where you're gonna find the smart girls. Empezar en esta dirección, okay, prendelo. You know, I appreciate the outreach, the comments and the emails. And if you can, share these videos with a friend or also at the very least, uh, just give it a like. It doesn't cost anything or take more than a half a second for you to click the like because then what it does when you click like, YouTube will suggest the videos to other people that have the same interests as you. So that's kind of like how the whole algorithm works. And so that, that goes and helps a lot too, you know? Like if you're not writing comments or sending donations or whatever, pressing like and writing a comment helps greatly as well, you know, because then YouTube will know that you find it useful and that it'll start suggesting, it'll know that it's a legit video that can help somebody and it'll start suggesting it to other people that are kind of like watching the same things that you're watching. Like I was saying, bookstores are the best place you want to meet like smart, intelligent girls. That's where they're at. They're reading. Dumb girls don't read. That's why they're dumb. So uh, I love bookstores. And then like if you're especially you're in the section that interests you, I like go to the business section. So if I see a girl in the business section, she ain't with her boyfriend or whatever, you know, or even if they are, I'll conversation with both of them. And it doesn't really matter. <coughs> Then you can talk to them and be like, oh, what kind of business? You're, you, you have a business? What kind of business you do? Or like, what's your favorite book? Or what are you trying to study in the business section? Because I have like business experience, so I'm genuinely curious too. And so you have these genuine conversations that you can start talking to people about, you know? And like, uh, you can start like uh, talking to them about that. And uh, what do you call it? Just blew out a big ass fucking cloud of smoke and it just went out there. It's so, hopefully she doesn't say anything. But anyways, uh, the bookstores I was going back to, you can have genuine conversations about stuff you're actually interested in and meet an in uh, intelligent girl. I love bookstores. And I always bring the girls to the bookstores because it's got something for everyone where uh, they can pick a book or uh, something that they're interested in and you can see what they like. You know, the things that they, that they like in their life that for like, uh, that they like uh, hobbies or whatever. No, let's keep it in. It's, whatever hobbies they're into, like what types of uh, genre they're into, and then you can kind of get to know them better. So let's keep going. Bookstores, number one, high on the list. To meet people or enjoy outdoor activities. She said parks is good too. Like, yo, dog, dog parks are great because then you got that ice to break with the other dog owners and you got dogs to play with. So they always like got your attention and make you smile. So it's a happy moment. Um, parks, hiking and stuff. When you're going out, people are out. You might meet other people that like hiking and talk to them about other places they like going hiking, their favorite spots and stuff, you know? So these are great. Uh, that's why I say these video, this video, cause she had a bunch of great um, places that she had noted. When I saw the video, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna share this with you guys. Cause uh, she actually gave really good advice. And especially with now with this guy M who wrote the request, now it's appropriate to kind of like cover it. Did you read my memoir? If you did, then you'll know that's where I met JP. Hi, JP. <laughs> Fitness classes, that's number five. Yoga, spinning, dance, etc. I have met guys at yoga and the gym. Go figure. No, it's more dangerous nowadays, but still. Six. So the gym, fitness places, there's cool gyms everywhere. MMA gyms, self-defense classes. Like I said, just go and go do things for yourself. Don't do it with the intention 
of trying to meet a girl. Just do everything to improve yourself. The gym is a place to improve yourself. You know, like you're trying to get fit and like build your strength and with a strong body comes a strong mind. And then if you're taking like self-defense classes, you're there every day with someone else. You see them, you're familiar to them. Then you can start talking to them about uh, what they like doing. And then one day like, hey, let's go. You want to go eat somewhere? You're hungry? Then you go out to eat somewhere and then you uh, get to know them better. It at least gives you the chance to become familiar, not a stranger. It's not so, like I said, it's not like a cold approach. Art galleries, great for connecting over shared interests. And I have met many people at art gallery events. Seven. Art gallery, like if you're into art, you know, I bought this uh, dolphin statue from Wyland. He's an ocean artist and he has like places in Laguna Beach, Hawaii, all over the world. Uh, for his art gallery and I bought this dolphin fucking statue that's made of, it's it's glass and it has like bronze dolphins on the inside swimming through the wave and I told him, I met him and uh, I told him, he asked why I was buying that one and I said because I, I swam with the, I surfed with a, uh, a wave like this with like four dolphins and I was eye to eye through the wave looking at a dolphin and so it meant a lot to me and so you know you get to meet cool people that way and they'll introduce you to other people as well. Volunteer activities, community service projects, hint, choose projects where you have a chance of meeting others like mine. She said volunteer because it got cut so volunteer places like beach cleanups, you know like helping in animal shelters, whatever things that you're interested in, you're into, helping poor people, anything like that, you'll draw uh, you'll go in there and then you'll be able to meet the other people that are kind of like into what you're into. Like you got to have common interests. That will help. I volunteered at the food bank for a little while. And what I also call the last chance wing at the hospital. The latter wasn't exactly great for meeting singles. And hint, if it's something that you love to do, do it anyways, because that's admirable. Eight, cooking classes. What I just said, guys, do it because you want to just for yourself, not be for the intention of trying to meet girls. When you go to try and meet girls, then they can sense that it's fake. You ain't being real. Like people can, it's just your energy. People can sense all that. It doesn't even need to be sa said. Learning she said, skills, wow. she said cooking classes. That's a great one, especially if like, like me, I'm vegan. So if I went to a vegan cooking class, I go to vegan festivals. You know, I see all these hot girls that are all vegan and I have something to talk to them about, you know, and chances are they're animal lovers at the same time because that's why they're vegan, not only just for health. And so I got all these things that I could talk to them about. So cooking class is kind of the same thing. And then you can like uh, cook each other food, like what they're doing for me without even taking it. While meeting others, you can set up a monthly cookout at each other's places with the theme of BYOB. Bring your own bestie to meet other people. Nine, concert and music festivals. Shared music interests can spark conversations. There's a special energy at music events where you may meet kindred spirits. 10. I love the concerts too. I met some really cool people doing concerts. Baby, not sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, concerts, I, don't, I used to go a lot years back. I don't go, I only go to see like one band now, which is Cannons, because their fucking shit is amazing. And that's why I record them. And then I go to the, like Peso Pluma, I went to that one. Or I don't like big venues. I only go to see them at small venues. And the only chance you get to see them at small venues is when they go to other countries, places that are far, or before they become famous. And those are the types of places I like to go. And then the people that are there all love the same thing. Again, you have something in common that you genuinely are interested in for you. So that's the kind of common theme here throughout this entire fucking video is to do things for you to improve yourself and enjoy yourself. Wow. Yeah, so concerts are great. Meetup groups. Join groups based on your hobbies or interests. I've done meetup groups. Those are cool too. Like you can meet, I did a bunch in Huntington. I did the yoga on the beach and then bike riding. You get to meet other people that are like doing something for themselves again. Meetup.com has every kind of group you can imagine. She said meetup.com. So go there if you're in America and join the stuff that you like doing. And it's, it's usually free or they ask for a donation. So you can go meet and do cool stuff with you can do the stuff you love with other people that love doing the same thing too. Or you can be a leader and start your own group based on some. There you go. You can start your own. Like if there is none in your area, don't wait for someone to do it. You be the one to do it. Something you're keen on. Eleven sporting events. Cheering for a team together can be fun. So like she said, sporting events, like there, there's another thing. Like if you're passionate about it, you guys have something to look forward to and talk about and going to these events. And like for me, like surfing is like sports too. And so that's why I like, I'll watch it sometimes. I'll watch the contest and you know, if you go, you go meet people on the beach or even if uh, a lot of the people here, I know some of the people that surf do it professionally. And so 
I get these connections to them as well. So you make friends. The whole goal is to make friends and connections because eventually, even though the person that you met may not be the person you want, you're going to be with or want to be with, they will connect you with other people. I think. I'm not really sure. Sporting events have added bonus of heightened arousal, as in anticipation and excitement. These events are very tribal and bonding. 12. Wine tastings. Enjoy wine and conversation in a relaxed setting. Or if you're in... Wine tasting would be more like a date, <clears throat> you know, to bring a girl to. So, I don't know, like, it'd be kind of hard because when people go wine tasting, they're usually with a date. So that's not really a good one. I wouldn't agree with this one. And a scotch or whiskey or whatever, just consume responsibly. 13. Food festivals. Nom nom. Try new cuisines. And that's I just mentioned that before. The vegan festivals. I love meeting the girls. They're so friendly. They're fit. They're pretty, you know, they're healthy and they love animals and they're eating vegan to help the planet at the same time. So there's all these things that are attractive and that are admirable that make me attracted to them. And meet food enthusiasts. Mmm, chocolate. Yeah, anyways, okay. Started raining. <laughs> 14. Cultural events, museums, theater performances, etc., etc. Don't be afraid to go solo, you'll be more approachable. Plus, it shows confidence. I also always tell you guys, go places alone. Don't be going with someone. No one wants, it's intimidating when there's someone else and they're the third wheel and you, they ain't got the same kind of mental fucking uh, level that you're at and you're talking and they got nothing else to contribute or they're not into the same stuff, then they're just a burden instead of actually help you just because you didn't want to go alone, you know? 15. Board game nights, not as in, but as in social groups, join a group or start a group. Hint, make it a public place. No woman wants to go to a strange man's home, even if you're not that strange. Right, guys. You gotta think of it from the woman's perspective, and it's good she's giving that. She needs to feel safe. 16. Dance classes. Salsa, swing, ballroom, tap. Try one, try another. Women do love a man who will dance. And you don't even have to be good at it. I did salsa classes. I even at my bar, we would have salsa nights, and I hired these instructors to come in every Thursday night, and we'd do salsa, bachata, and they would teach, and then we'd have all the customers just fucking, as long as they're just buying drinks and shit, we give the lessons for free to everyone. So that's how we filled up those those uh, uh, salsa nights. And the, the salsa teachers also had their friends come in. So it also brought in customers. 17. Farmer's markets. A vibrant and social atmosphere. If you're into chefing, go solo. Otherwise, go with a girl friend. Hashtag wingman. People are automatically friendlier when they see you have similar values. 18. A similar values. And especially if you have a girl with you, like that just makes them feel more at ease that you're not weird because there's already a girl hanging out with you. So it's great to have that if you have that available, but most of you probably don't, so that won't work. Unless you go with a friend, if you really have some cool friends that you ain't really trying to bang, you can go with them, you know, and then they can help you. They can give you that social proof you need to let down the guard of any other girl that you're trying to talk to that you meet over there. Alumni events, university or social gatherings, women who are educated tend to want men who are educated. And since there are fewer men attending post-ed nowadays, you'll be a minor among sharks. Hmm. Okay, 19 professional. Alumni, I didn't go to college, so, you know, well, I went, but I'm not like some kind of alumni of like something that what she's talking about, where I would go to meet class old classmates, you know, like something like that. Conferences or lectures. Connect with like-minded individuals. I've met so many. She said conferences or lectures. That's great. Like business, I go to like business networking conferences. Like I used to go to like uh, uh, the Ty Lopez ones and then the Thrive and uh, whatever other kind of conference that has to do with things that would help my business and help me grow. I would go to those. And so I'd meet other cool guys that um, have had lifelong friendships with to this day now that have become close because we have that same drive and wanting to be successful and grow our businesses and be the best versions of ourselves. So many people's at conventions, I can't even count them all. 20. Dog parks. If you have a dog, it's a great way to meet others with pets, like sporting events. I mentioned this on the parks, the dog parks, like I said, you already have the love for the dogs. Since pet parents share a special animal affinity. 21, beaches and resorts. Yeah, beaches, like I said, like the surfing, people are cool at the beach. Resorts is great because they're there because they already like, uh, they can afford it to be at a resort. So that's a cool thing. You can talk to them about where they're from, you know, because the chances are they're making money and they have time to be there. So they got an interesting life. And even if they don't have an interesting life, they still did went out of their way to get out of their comfort zone to be there and go to a place that most people won't ever go to. Most people won't even leave their houses 
So that, even if they are like a, a, in the rat race, they're still more courageous than the average rat. And you can uh, talk to them about that. Holiday destinations attract single travelers. Not only that, but no one knows you there. Okay, so I'm gonna add to this like that wasn't on there. Hostels are great places. You can meet young girls there that are traveling. A lot of them are traveling alone. That's why they're at a hostel. If their boyfriend was there or their sh sucker sugar, they'd be in a five-star hotel or a hotel. They ain't gonna be at a hostel. So even though you uh, won't stay at a hostel, just get a room there anyway and have your other room and just go there and meet people there and you'll be able to bond and see what they're up to, where they're going. You can go do whatever they're doing. And it'll be a lot of like, I met a lot of girls that just graduated from like college or graduated even high school and they're traveling. That's their gift from their family for them to go travel. So they stay in hostels to save money and be on a budget. And then you can meet those kind of girls. So there's a, uh, she's probably not gonna mention it, but I'm mentioning it for you guys based on my experience from what I've done. So you can try on that new social hat with little risk. 22, spiritual or religious gatherings. If so she didn't mention the hostel, but that's a great, great tip for you guys. Like even if you're a baller already and you just wanna, and you're somewhere, just go rent a room right there and just go, they don't need to know that you got another hotel. Just pretend you're staying there, fuck. And blend in with them. So she said, uh, what was the next thing she said? Religious stuff. Yeah, if you're like religious, then it's a great thing. Another thing to bond over and give thanks and that spiritual side of you that you can meet that kind of girl with that, that same, the same fucking uh, spiritual thoughts and appreciation for the blessings. You share similar beliefs, go to church or a spiritual center or heck, join a Tony Robbins retreat. Whatever speaks to you. Hint, if you hear voices, you might want to get help first. 23, group hikes or outdoor adventures. Best is to join a group. Women's primary need is to feel safe. 24, the language exchange meetups. Learning a new language while making connections. Awesome. There you go, guys. A lot of you guys are traveling to like Philippines, Thailand, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico. Speak the language. And a group is a great way to motivate yourself and be in a social setting at the same time while learning. Meet some cool people. Awesome. But Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, while they're great for self-study, that won't help you engage in conversations in English or your preferred language. Right, those apps, you need to actually talk to people in order to actually learn it because then it stays in your head more. So you're going to need to maybe set up a group or go to a group. 25, comic conventions or fan events. For those with... I would bring the girls to these things and it would be interesting to see, like, it's interesting to see all the other girls, like there's some hot girls dressed up. There's like into that shit, the anime and like these characters that they see on TV, they all want to be them. And this is where they get to show off and uh, dress up sexy. That's like the sexy version of whatever uh, thing they're into. Shared interests. Again, you'll share a common interest. Plus you get to get dressed up and become someone else, leaving your shyness at home. 26, writing classes or workshops, a fun and interactive way to meet new people. I'm still friends with people I met at a screenwriting class many moons ago. More on that in a minute. 27, pottery or art classes, engage in creative activities with others. A woman will admire you for showing up to a not traditionally masculine class if you truly enjoy it or have fun in it and have no self-consciousness about it. 28. That's like similar to cooking classes. Film screenings or movie clubs. Whether you're into noir or oldies or indie flicks, host a private screening at your local movie theater. Charge a minimum to cover the cost and give the intro to the movie. Invite people to chat with you or meet somewhere after to discuss it. Some of the friends I met in the writing class, the screenwriting class, went on to make movies and I met others through them at some of those screenings. Also high five to those people. 29, historic tours and sightseeing excursions or simply traveling solo. Whether it's in your own city or abroad, you'll meet broads with the same interest. Plus, they won't know if you're shy, so you can don your confidence cap. As an to always tell you guys, travel alone. It's the only way you're gonna be social. You're forced to be social and it'll force you to do things you normally won't do. And you won't have, you'll have complete freedom to go where you want and whenever you want without having to wait for someone or worry about if they wanna do that or not. You don't gotta be a babysitter and not have to worry about them being a third wheel when you meet somebody. You're gonna be invited to more places when you're alone to go out with a group or to be led into the group or to meet a girl and go somewhere with them. If you're by yourself, it ain't gonna happen. It's gonna be harder for it to happen when you're with somebody. Introvert, I've done a lot of solo traveling and have always met new people. 30, gaming cafes or video game events. The only way super keen gamers are gonna get the girl is if they meet the girl in the real world to talk about their favorite artificial world. 
31. I don't play video games and I don't suggest you guys do either, unless you're already set and you got all your shit together. It's just a waste of time, guys. Oh, unless it's like a reward for you and that's not like how these video game nerds, that's all they do, you know? Better things to be doing with your time. Local community events or festivals. Check your city's calendar for happenings. Try something new. You'll discover if you like it or not so much. 32, speed dating events. I know, I know. Organized meetups designed for... All right, I'm a, uh, I'll let her talk about speed dating and then I'll tell you about my speed dating. For singles, minimal time commitment, maximum potential for funny stories. 33. Okay, the date, speed dating, don't bother doing that, guys. Go to the whorehouse and do the speed dating technique there and like go through all the girls and interview them, see which one you like the best, which one has the best personality, which one's not so transactional, which one's not so fake. Um, and then you can find the coolest ones there. Then you pick that one. That's kind of like my version of speed dating and you get the guaranteed result of banging uh, without having to do all these, jump through these hoops and trying to like impress these girls. And then you follow my reverse dating strategy once you find the super coolest one in that club or bar or wherever you're at around the world where all the girls are and you've already guaranteed, you already banged her. So that's the part that got out of the, it's out of the way now. So chances are you'll be able to bang them wherever you go again in the future and you're actually enjoying their company at this point and there's no pussy pressure to think that you're gonna get laid or worry if you're gonna get laid or not. And then you can go out and spend money and take them on dates and uh, go to these restaurants that you like and go to these places, take them on a trip to the places you like. Don't take them to the places they wanna go. Like if you're trying to travel, go because you wanna go and they're gonna accompany you and you're letting them into your world. And then once you've done that a bunch of time, then you can offer to go to where she's wanting to go that after you've built that, that trust and that confidence and that you really like her and you have this connection with them, then you can take them somewhere that they've been wanting to go to like, you know, kind of compromise, give and take kind of thing, and then do it for them. They'll appreciate that and they'll like love you even more. But what I was saying is like, follow my reverse dating. If you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch it. It's called the reverse, my reverse dating strategy. That'll help explain what I just told you about the speed dating and finding the coolest ones. And then it's okay to go take them out on dates after because you already vetted them and you know that they actually are like cool and they like you, you have a connection and that they're less, they're all about the money, but these ones are less about the money. You know, so you're gonna find the one, you wanna find the ones that are less about the money and more about having fun and enjoyment and wanting to go out and experience things. That's what you wanna look for. Through work, yep, many couples still meet through work and their social related functions. I met my- Yeah, the people at work usually meet like that. My cousin got married to a nurse, he's a doctor, he got married to a nurse, so where are they all day? They're at the hospital all day. And where's the nurse at? At the hospital all day. So chances are that's where they grow and build connections. They start talking at work and they're familiar because they see each other every day. And it's not so much a cold approach anymore at that point. So that's why people are more bold to like talk to their coworkers because they're there every day. They're, they, they have to be there. And so they always see them. They know their schedule. They're there when they're there, when they're not, you know. And so a majority of their time is spent there. And so that's why they end up uh, forming a relationship with them. My first boyfriend at work, he looked like Martin Short, but he was way funnier. Another thing that people do, if you don't work in the same industry or the same niche or in the same place, that's where they're meeting the person they're cheating with. Because the same thing goes both ways. Like they're there spending time with them all day. They're there seeing them every day and they're talking to each other every day. So that builds the connection and eventually they're gonna bang and cheat and have an affair. <laughs> Just make sure you know the risks and abide the HR rules. Bonus number one, acting or improv classes. <laughs> yes, scary as, yes, especially if you're shy, but it will help you get over shyness stat. When I was in LA, I took acting classes. I'm a terrible actor, but it did boost my confidence and I'm still friends with many of the people I met there. Bonus number two. Similarly, Toastmasters or other public speaking classes will help you boost your confidence and get over stage fright, maybe, which ultimately applies to all conversations. I tried it, it helped. Where else have you seen or met women that you were attracted to? Share your stories and ideas. Start from wherever your social skills are at and take one step out of your comfort zone. Huh, I'll tell you where. There's some places where I've met girls at. The whorehouse. That, she didn't mention that. So that's my bonus to her bonuses. Just for the sake of getting out of your comfort zone. The only goal being to take the step, not for anything else other than for practice, not for some grander outcome, like having a conversation or getting her phone number. Mm -mm -mm, just practice. Remember, 
The key is to be open, friendly, and respectful when meeting women. And don't take it personally if she's not in the mood for a conversation. Women are moody creatures. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on in her world, so you might as well assume it has nothing to do with you. And act accordingly, which is respectfully and compassionately. Life begins outside your comfort zone. You are not going to die if you smile at a woman or say, hey, how's your day going so far? Even if she scowls, or worse, if she's rude, thank God you dodged a bullet. And if you don't let her reaction phase you, then if she is a throwback, she won't have the satisfaction of seeing you squirm. But if she's just having a bad day, she may apologize, or at minimum, potentially feel bad later. Hard to believe, I know, but the good ones actually do feel bad when they act rudely. Also, remember... Different settings suit different personalities, so find places that align with your interests and passions. This is especially important for introverts who often don't like to leave their cozy homes. Engaging in activities you truly enjoy provides common ground and you'll enjoy yourself regardless. And if you don't know what your interests are, start trying new things. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Remember, rejection is God's protection and redirection or if you're not a God person, the universe. If you're an introvert and just want to expand your options, well then yes, maybe online dating is the way to go. But Tinder is the worst dating app. And I guarantee 99% of you who've tried dating apps or are on them are posting photos that are instantly turning women off. So for the basics of effective online dating, get my online dating program. It's only $10 US. And if you want me to hold your hand, don't do online dating at all, guys. Don't fucking waste your time. I've already done videos about that. Fucking watch them. Online dating scams and on, I'll, I think I'll put back the video of the, the Tinder one I did. Um, sucks. I'll, you're never going to get matches and the ones that match are fucking fat chicks, single moms. And or people trying to scam you or rob you or kidnap you. Metaphorically, to take steps to get out of your comfort zone that are manageable for where you are right now, get my Wake Up To Love program. But again, I must warn you, there's a lot of homework and it's a self-improvement program, not a pickup artist program. Though, if you do the work, it will help you get some action if that's what you want. If you do the work, it will show you how to become the kind of man you need to be to attract the kind of woman you want to keep. Well, guys, she has her little fucking program. If you're interested, go and visit her site. Um, her YouTube is Your Wingman. And then I've already been teaching you guys what to do. So it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. But the problem is a lot of guys aren't taking action. So you can watch all these videos, do all these courses, but if you ain't doing nothing about it or actually trying to get out there and do it, then your life's not gonna change or improve. So hope you guys enjoyed that. <clears throat> now work on the rest of your shit and then go to these places, start doing these things and you'll start meeting cool people that uh, the in the real world that you can become friends with and hang out with and possibly turn into a girlfriend or a relationship. So, all right. Talk to you guys soon. Adios, pura vida. Baby, they say adios. Uh. Guys, it's finally here. I got the Jedi group open and I got a website put together for all you guys that can reach out to me instead of sending me an email. The website's 420john69.com and pretty much everything you need is listed out on the links above and the links, ab links below. So if you're interested in a Jedi group, if you're interested in uh, getting help with a trip, relationship advice, credit card service, real estate, affiliate programs, pretty much anything that I'm talking about, business, investments, it's all on the website. So that way you guys can help me help you a lot faster. That way I don't miss out on any of the emails and it'll help me stay in touch with you guys. Even if something happens to the channel or the Instagram or whatever, if everything gets taken down or blocked by the platforms, I'll still have a way to get in touch with you guys. So go ahead and go to the website and Pick whichever link that you need help on and fill out the information and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios, pura vida. All right, guys, so I'm putting together these groups, the my Jedi Master Inner Circle. So there's gonna be two levels to it. You're gonna have the Jedi Masters, which are the guys that are making 100K or more per year at least and have been well-traveled, have a lot of experience and know of different places that we can go to experience and find beautiful girls and be able to share amongst everyone and give advice to other people as well. And then we're also gonna have the young Jedis that maybe aren't as experienced or just starting out in life or are young and 
don't really have much money, but they want to live this lifestyle. They're being inspired and they want to start and learn and be able to communicate with each other. So that'll be the second level. And of course the Jedi master level can, will be in both so that you'll have the Jedi masters also helping the young Jedis by answering questions uh, for people that are new. And then the Jedi masters, what we're going to do is have like trips maybe once a year where all of us Jedi masters come together and have go to a destination where we'll be able to experience all of this together and share and network and share financial advice, how to make money. It'll be how to make money, how to deal with breakups, how to meet girls, pretty much everything that you're seeing on my video, my videos that I'm teaching, we'll be able to network and do it in person and put, put together these groups and meetings for people and kind of be my me as the connector connecting all of you guys together because I'm getting all these messages from people from all walks of life in different parts of the world and a lot of you guys tell me that you don't have anyone to share these experiences with or share your stories and share all the knowledge that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years and once you communicate with me it's like you're spilling your entire story because you're so excited to tell someone finally because there's no one else you can take. Can't tell your friends, can't tell your family, and there's no one you can ask questions. There's no one you can uh, share these intimate details with. And so I wanna bring you guys together with other like-minded people that are watching my videos and kind of wanna live this lifestyle as well. And let me know which Jedi master uh, or Jedi part level in the inner circle that you wanna be in. There's gonna be either the young Jedi or the Jedi masters. And the Jedi masters is gonna be 500 for you guys to join that's the, the screening process and then we got the young jedis for 50 bucks that way it's affordable and the 500 is to screen out obviously if you're doing well 500 isn't much and then it keeps out the people that aren't serious it's kind of like the how to weed out the people that aren't really real and of course there's going to be moderation and there's going to be like con content moderation where i moderate who gets in and interview the people that want to come in to make sure they're real and that way everyone that's in the group is actually there because they want to be and that they share this similar outlook on life and want to live this type of life and level up even more make more connections make more friends kind of like me and tim the 72 year old that you've been seeing interview and other people you haven't seen in my videos uh that i hang out with it'll be kind of like being into the inner circle and make make these kind of bonds that will last a lifetime and these kind of memories that we can share together and have some awesome adventures together you guys will be invited once you pay the entrance fee and then we'll get you in all right guys that's it adios pura vida you say adios baby adios uh, <laughs> bye well like guys if you uh coming down here to cancun fly to Carmen, i have friends down here as well that can take care of stuff if you're heading down to costa rica i got friends in costa rica that can help take care of the stuff you know help uh, assist with transportation and activities and lodging and things like that and then business that helped me live this life is the credit card service business so if you own a business and you're still paying the credit card fees you don't have to do that anymore stop wasting your money you could be enjoying it every month instead of like whatever you're paying to the bank a thousand two thousand to the bank every month you take it and go on a vacation look at the ocean how beautiful it is down here and the weather is perfect it's so early in the morning I'm already sweating it's tropical and uh, people are swimming down there if you could see and I, the only thing I wish that was down here is the that there was more waves but like I said, if you own a business, uh, you don't have to pay for the fees. You can use it for vacation, take your family out, reinvest in your business, or whatever it is you want to do on with it. It's just it's way better than wasting it, paying it to the bank and getting nothing in return. So that's it. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Adios. Pura